All righty, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Spotlight. We have a new guest, another person who reached out to me, which is such a flattering honor, but I read <laughs> up on it, and I was really excited to talk to him. We have Ben Scudder. Hello, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you just go ahead and, I guess, introduce some of the things that are I, I, important to you? Like, what are the aspects of you that you'd want people to know? Um. Well, oh, gosh, that's kind of hard. Um. I guess I'll go with the basic stuff. Electrical engineering major, um, sophomore. Um, I was diagnosed with alopecia my senior year of high school, so that's pretty not cool at all, actually. <laughs> kind of sucks. <laughs> you know, it was, oh, yeah, it was rough, but um, that's kind of an interesting fact. Um, so, on that grind set yeah. for Jim, losing weight, big gamer, involved in the gaming esports club, so, yeah. Yeah, so you said that you had kind of gotten more comfortable talking about, like, the alopecia. Oh, yeah. um, can you, like, walk me through that? Like, how did you oh, deal with that? How do you get over that? Like, what, you know, was, walk me through awful, that. It was awful, dude. When it first started, <laughs> so it was about senior year, about, like, February. So this would have been um, 2021. Um, and all of a sudden, we were just sitting downstairs watching a movie, me and my family, and I turned around, and my mom saw, like, a bald spot in the back of my head. And she was like, what is that? I was like, I don't know. Didn't think much of it, and we went to went to my haircut. Asked my barber, she was like, "Yeah, she was. You can probably might want to talk to your doctor about it. It looks like it's getting a little bigger." I was like, "Okay." So we go, we talk, and talk to the doctor. He goes, "Yeah, it's alopecia." And the thing with alopecia, it's an autoimmune disease. So basically, my immune system is attacking my hair follicles, and so that's why it doesn't grow. Um, and it was devastating Dude, when uh, when I got hit with that, and I was like. Because and they also there's not a whole lot of treatment for it, and there's like some very minimal research done on it. People don't know how to combat it, fix it, and the symptoms are just I shouldn't say symptoms, but the varying length in it is so random. It's all per person. Some people last you know they'll get two spots and they'll last two months. Some people it's their entire life, and it's everything. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. And that and that sucks so much worse because it's like your senior year of high school. Exactly. Like you're about to go into college. Maybe mm -hmm. if you had grown up, like you're in sixth grade, everyone just gets used to it, yeah. and like you become that. You know, you mm -hmm. be, you become part of that. But mm -hmm. then, like right when you're about to leave, like okay, here's your brand new life. Yeah. Like <laughs> bald. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. I I will say you rock you rock the baldness. Dude. I try. I, I, I try so hard. It's and, like. And going to the gym is such an OP strategy too, because like that's what you got to do. That was well, that was the thing too. That's like <laughs> honestly, the alopecia helped push the gym motivation a little bit. Nobody likes a fat bald guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> but, like, well, just way to take control. You know what I mean? Like, it was. I, I'll be honest. It was awful when it first started. Like going into a shower and just watching it all fall out. It was. Terrible. Dude. Uh, I can't thank my mom and dad enough for the support, honestly. Um, so what do you what do you do to get through that? Like, what are some of the, I mean, some of, like, the emotional things you talk to yourself about? Like, what were what were some of the things that helped you through that? Um, ooh, gosh. Honestly, just a lot of just family support, friend support. Um, this kind of goes along with it. We cut my hair in two stages. So it was kind of falling out, then it was thinning out, and then it was like, this was now summer, in between senior year and freshman year of college. And we kind of, I shouldn't say buzzed it, but kind of hit it with like a little, uh, little fade, I guess. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> kind of hit it with While little, you can. Fade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then, but my friends wanted to be there for it, and they supported me through that, and I, again, can't thank them enough for that. Um, but honestly, their support and not, you know, saying much about it. And then after I started getting just mentally more comfortable with it, like, and accepting it, started making jokes about it. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, if I can make a joke about it, I'm comfortable with it. My friends start making jokes about it. They're comfortable with it. And it's just a great time all around. Because yeah. then it, it, you just it, you make it a part of your lifestyle. Yeah. You make it a part of you, you know. And it helps build that resilience, yeah. too, to, like, okay, we've gone from – being sad about it to like, 
basically just practicing any horrible person yeah. that might come up and say something. It's like, it's like oh, I've heard it all uh, dude's gonna, Are you going to come up and call me cue ball? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care, yeah. man. Dude, go on. Be more creative, I yeah, guess. So I was like, with something good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, cue ball. <laughs> oh, we love the cue ball. Yeah. yeah now when, when we've completely shaved it all off, that was, like, awful. Well, but yeah, I... It was... Dude, it's just, I, just something that I had to get to the point in my head mentally. I was like, you just have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those things. I can't change it. Yeah. It's out of my hands. It's out mm-hmm. of my control. And all so you can do is control how it. you like feel about it. Exactly. It's really just the only yep. point. It's like change your perspective, change your actions. Those yeah, are really the exactly. only two things you could ever do. You just got to go through it. Yeah. Roll with the punches, man. Well, and you're, I mean, you're rolling, man. I mean, I, you see, for two years, for having it for two years now. I was going to say, well, and, that, and, that, and that's why I say like, with with little hair or no hair, but also being jacked, like that's a look, and that's a pretty common that's look too. What I'm saying. And that's it's a good to look. To. That's what I'm that's trying what, to get to. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, like, that's what that's the control. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you take it, oh, <laughs> and you're yeah. just working with just it like, because right. you'll just be above most people, even mm-hmm. without like any of the hair and yeah. the good build. I mean, like you're just you're higher. Okay, you're, exactly. You're, I'm just going from oh down here on the low tier. No. Straight, like it's, ele- it's elevating up. it, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, way to you're building your mental resilience and your physical resilience too. Yeah. So, um, well, I mean, it, it's awesome to hear that you had that support system that was able to get you yeah, through that. That helped me so much. I couldn't imagine doing that without my family and friends. Yeah, sure. and what would you what would you say for people who are going through something similar to this? Like, if you were to give advice to people dealing with alopecia, like, what would you say? Just roll with it, honestly. Um, Take it in the stages that it comes. You know, for me, I was talking to my dermatologist. Um, he goes, yeah, we don't really know how far it's going to go. It looks like it could go full. Um, it looks like it could just stop, but it doesn't know. Like, mm-hmm. no one knows. Um, but just roll with it. If you cut it short, cut it short. If you're a wig person, you can't live without it, get a wig. <laughs> like, I, I met um, another girl with it, not here, um, but... She had alopecia and it was completely bald, but she rolled with the wig. Yeah, I and think she it'd be was rocking with the wig. I think honestly, it'd be probably harder for women to deal with alopecia than I can than imagine. Men. <laughs> like, I like I thought about that, and then um, there's this foundation called National Alopecia Foundation, and people put their stories on there. And there's so many women that go on there. Some of them are rocking the bald look. Mm-hmm. Um, all power to them. Yeah. <laughs> if I was a woman, I don't know if I could. Um, I guess that gives me a little bit of it for guys. You know, mm-hmm. it's easier. But, yeah, just it's roll tough. with it. It's going to take a lot of mental preparation and mental battles. Oh, I'm trying not to. I've got to sneeze, but it's not coming out yet. <laughs> yeah. oh, do you think that it's made you a stronger person? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, depends on what perspective you look at it, too. Mm-hmm. But. I imagine that it was difficult, but oh. kind of getting over that put you a step was, ahead of most people. Yeah, it imagine. was super difficult, and now, like I said, I just live with it, make fun of it. You know, I get to dress up as Pitbull. I get to dress up as <laughs> Howie Mandel, <laughs> Vin Diesel, there you like, go. <laughs> all Mr. The famous, Clean, all the famous hot bald people. Exactly, really. I get to dress you. up as all these bald people. <laughs> and I get to do it for real and don't have to wear a bald. Uh huh. Yeah, like, this is. This is it's much easier. That that's the bright side. Exactly. Right there is how <laughs> Howie Mendel at <laughs> the big old glasses. Yeah, I can get the big glasses, yeah. I can get the shades, look like Pitbull. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Um But oh, another thing though with it, with being bald, no bedhead. No yes, no so you can just head. wake up and just deal with the day. Go with it. So yep. it's so windy and my hair is so thick that it just like I look like a maniac every time I go into places. I'm doing the, like, just getting after it. So, yeah. hey, I mean, this is looking at the bright side. Exactly. You got to see the positives. I don't have to worry about that. Heck, I'm saving money on, on shampoo. shampoo. <laughs> yeah. I'm saving shampoo money on shampoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's there great. you go, man. Just straight up. Just <laughs> haircuts, too. I mean. Like a, yeah, exactly. I don't have to pay for haircuts, this either. Is, this is starting to look like a dub, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> next Next episode, you're going to see me with... No eyebrows, no <laughs> no hair. I'm <laughs> taking the bend, dude. They'll say this yeah, is gonna save gonna me some money. Take the straight razor too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, Walter White that thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Get the Heisenberg look going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, dude. I, I I think it definitely is an inspiration 
to like just you know mm-hmm. see you just dealing with it, laughing about it, talking about it. Like it, it is. I do want to congratulate you thank on that. You, on just dealing you. with that, and I think that's an yeah. awesome thing to talk about mm-hmm. and like tell that story because it's just something that people don't really think about having to deal with. It was not like when we first heard about it, we had never heard about it before. Mm-hmm. And it's just something you know. It was like, what's alopecia? Never heard of it. And then now, now that we, I've been affected by it, my family sees it everywhere now. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, this person has it. This person had it, and then they got over it. And it's like, it's a lot more common than people think, but some people just don't like to share about it. So Yeah, dude, and it, it's hard. It, it's The social thing is hard, and, and you get in your own head about it oh. super bad, too, towards, like, you think people are going to notice it, but, like, yeah. Most people just aren't even like looking at that or Most like people, noticing. Well, that. they noticed. For me, it was they noticed it. They just don't care. Yeah, they just because it's they're it's, not. It's not them. It's not. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and I guess that was kind of a positive with it happening when it did, because I came in here bald. Mm-hmm. I came in freshman year Iowa State bald. That's all my friends knew me as. They don't know me with. They didn't they, know me yeah, there. Yeah, and so they didn't care. Yeah, so you kind of build it as like your character as like yeah. part of. It just becomes a normal thing, yeah. you know. What I mean, I think you can most most things that are kind of out of the ordinary, you can just turn into your thing if you have enough personality exactly. to just be comfortable with. You just it. gotta own it. Because yeah, it, it. yeah, it's like the difference between being known as the the bald guy or the guy who's insecure about being bald. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. both of those things could be you. He's like, you know what I mean. <laughs> don't, don't mention it. Don't talk about it. You yeah, know I mean? like no. I'll be sitting there with my with my friends, be like, dude. Shut up! You're bald. Yeah, <laughs> you have yeah, to talk. yeah, uh, uh, yeah, dude, for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just you, you got to roll with it. You got to yeah. own it. Yeah, and I, I yeah, I, I can imagine because I, my this front tooth is fake. Mm-hmm. Uh, it goes whoa in and out like that's that. That's crazy. Yeah, and I, I have to take it out when I eat. Mm-hmm. And the first month that it fell out, um, like I just had to wear, have no tooth for like a month because. It took so long to get surgery, uh-huh. and it's, like, right in the front. And I smile so much. <laughs> but thankfully, it was COVID, so I could just wear a mask. Oh, you just wore a mask. So it was, like, right. it was so nice, but just all those moments. And, like, mm-hmm. it was just in my head of, like, okay, these people are thinking these things. Most people probably didn't even notice. Oh, you know what I mean? Any conversations I had with people, they were just like, oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And that was it. You know what I mean? It wasn't, like, it's not like I wasn't getting dunked on about it. Or <laughs> yeah, like, well, I'm not going to talk to this dude. He doesn't have a tooth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, just like, why would I talk to that guy? Yeah. Oh, so it's Dude, I mean, and it just ends up being okay. It is what it is. It's a little quirk. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a just a little. Thing. It makes you interest. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? If you if you dig into it mm-hmm. and just like become comfortable with it, you just are cooler than most people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like you just something to talk about too. I was yeah, I was gonna say. Right. I mean, you can go on a podcast and talk about exactly. it for <laughs> for 15 minutes. So I mean, it's kind of a, I don't know. It it, it definitely it. It was a def. It seems like a hard time for you to go through something like that. Mm-hmm. But like, if you look at the positive, it's kind of like you come out on top. Yeah, you. you, know you what I mean, yeah, you can come out on top for you, sure. You dub on. You top just of have that. to. Yeah. You gotta. Like I said, it's a hard battle, but as soon as you reach the top, yeah. it's it's <laughs> you, great. You win. It's great. You, you win. win. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that could be said for just a lot of things too. It's yeah. just like, you know, if you're struggling with something, try to try to own it and just get on top of it. Yep. Yeah. You so. gotta. You gotta fight that battle. This is the inspiration, Ben, for that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk to you. Well, first off, I'm a little. I'm interested as to what you do with esports and like how you're involved in that because you talk about like hosting events, wanting to host events, being a part of the club, and I believe you're on the team also. Well, or we're on yeah. the team. Or like walk yeah. me through like what you do like okay. in the esports realm. So, um. So I never even knew Iowa State had an esports program until I came in here. And I think I saw them at, like, the Club Fest or the, no, what was it? The freshman orientation thing, you know I'm Yeah, yeah, about. Destination. Destination, that's State. what it is, yeah. I saw them there, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I thought about it, and I got in this really nice laptop for college, and I was like, you know, maybe I'll try out. I was like, I like this game. So I, I was bought it Siege. Siege. Yeah, yeah, okay. I bought Siege, um, and I actually ended up, using my friend's account so I could play the, some of the operators on it, some of the characters, because mm-hmm. I didn't have any. Um, and I actually tried out on controller, too, because I was Xbox gamer since yep. like middle school. Yeah. So I tried out on controller, not on mouse and keyboard, and then they put me on a team. I was like, no way. 
I was like, this is so cool. Um, Wait, so you got on the team playing with a controller? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is, you're playing on hard mode. It, it hard. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's hard enough on the Xbox consoles because there's there's a little bit of aim assist, mm -hmm. um, but on PC there's none. Yeah. None. Yeah, so you, like, you're precise. It was, it was tough, but we made it through. Um, but you can't use it in competitions, mm -hmm. so I had to learn mouse and keyboard, and luckily I'd played like a lot of Minecraft as a kid. Yeah. Um, so I had the mouse and keyboard pretty down, um, so that was great. And then, so after that, I um, subbed in for JV for our Open LAN event that we usually host every year, but we didn't host it this year because of funding. Um, so I subbed for JV then, and that was kind of like my little boost up. And then I tried out again sophomore year. Uh, this year and in the fall and i made varsity um subbed for varsity um because there's a couple dudes that are, you know they're a little better yeah <laughs> uh, I'll, say, hey, I'll give a, myself a little credit i'm yeah. pretty good but i mean there are better. people who are better yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um and then so i subbed for varsity then and then i also tried out again this spring made it as a starter um but i actually dropped out of it so that's why i'm kind of like not really like there. in and you yeah. were like I dropped out of it because this internship that I have is taking up so much time mm -hmm. and the way that the team wanted to move the team forward and you know practices and such like that I didn't want to hinder that so mm -hmm. I dropped out we brought up our sub and they've done great so far um and but uh, for the event hosting actually this next weekend we're hosting um an online R6 tournament so we're trying to get that LAN experience because playing together in person, such a blast. Mm -hmm. when I, like when I went to the open LAN and I was playing next to all these guys, it was so much fun. You know, you fist bumping after every round. You get yeah. a kill. Let's go, man. Let's go. It's, that's hype, man. It was, it was like hype. an actual yeah. score. I it, mean. Was, it was great. And so we're trying to get that for our teams. Me and um, our esports man, one of our esports managers, um, Alex. I go. Yeah. Um, Shout out Alex. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we're trying to get that land experience. So we'll have our teams play in our esports room on Friday and Saturday. And then um, we're going to stream games. We're going to cast them. Um, we got a room rented out. So we're going to go in there. Sam's actually going to help me Dude. with um, <laughs> uh, some of the streaming stuff. He's working on looking it up, getting it set up. Mm hmm. Because um, apparently he wants a face cam and he wants to be all dressed up in yeah. a tux or something. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, very, Sam. It's very you, Sam. You can, yeah. you can do that. I'll be right next to you. Yeah. We'll be going crazy. But, um, yeah. So we're going to do that. Um, which we're really excited about. We've never done any of this before. So this is all kind of new to us. Um, so I'm very excited for it, actually. Um, and just kind of helping push esports forward, especially collegiate level. Because there's... It's a very weird scene mm -hmm. in the terms of some private schools you can get scholarships for it, but like a lot of public institutions, there's nothing for it, which kind of sucks. But so yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. I'm very interested in a lot of that. So ju so just to get the story story straight, you did, so, <laughs> did you play a lot of Siege on Xbox? Like oh, too much. <laughs> okay, like okay, because. The way that you you had just described it, it was oh. like it was like, oh, I bought this game called Siege. Yeah. But I played Minecraft. <laughs> so yeah, then I, I got I, on I'll, I'll elaborate. So when I was yeah, so I had played Siege a ton on Xbox. Okay, but okay. I also before I even had my Xbox, you know, family had a computer, but I played a lot of Minecraft and any other free to play game I could get my grimy little yeah, hands on. Yeah. You the know, so, gamer. <laughs> yeah. Because I had nothing to do. I was a fat kid. And, <laughs> yeah, whatever. But And so I had that experience with mouse and keyboard. So that's what helped me get into it. Um, but yeah, I played a lot of Siege on Xbox. So transferring that game sense over was just mm -hmm. one to one. It was right there. Yeah, was right there. Right there. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So then, okay, that makes a lot. I, I had figured that that was the case. Yeah. Um, I probably should have said that. Otherwise, it's just like, this information that yeah. just came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Sam, but like three, four thousand hours in one semester and it's on JV, so it's like <laughs> and I and I know that yeah. being on varsity is like nuts. So like it's a it's a time requirement. For I was sure. like, that's really impressive that it's you just that you went on to varsity like mm -hmm. what, freshman or sophomore year. Sophomore like year. but still yeah. I mean one year of college experience and then mm -hmm. you're on I mean that's pretty impressive, dude. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. <laughs> it. Mean, so the guys on that right now are great. Mm-hmm. 
and like I said, they did really well in the in the league that we competed on. But yeah, so I, I'm I would love to get back into it for sure. I love playing Siege. Well, it's that, such a, it's such a bad game, but it's also a game that I, love <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Everyone who plays Siege is like some of the angriest people I know, but they <laughs> they, they still love it so yeah. much. Just, oh, yeah, I love that aspect of Siege, where it's just like, dude, this this game sucks. I hate so I, I hate my life and I hate myself when I play this game, but yeah. also it's so fun. Yeah. And, it's like, <laughs> I want to punch my monitor, but I can't afford it. Yeah, so, so I'll just punch I'll my just, desk, break my wrist. <laughs> we'll keep move on. Yeah. We'll keep playing. <laughs> oh yeah. So. Um, so you got onto varsity and then played for a semester. Um, yeah, a little I'd more say than a sub, semester. Subbed for a semester, and then, like I said, I had this semester. I played, I don't know, a few weeks, and then I realized, you know, like this is gonna, this like, is gonna kind of conflict. And so then, but so. you, you transitioned from playing on varsity to kind of being like in a, a not event manager, but like um, some sort of outside force that helps kind of do this stuff or like... a little bit yeah so i've like i said alex has we've become super close friends um through this and jail too but jail ghosts me so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> anti shout out <laughs> <laughs> no i just love jail but um yeah i kind of just me and alex were a little sad when we heard that our open land event got canceled because we were looking forward to it and we're like we need to try to do something so yeah we Cooked up this idea. We're like, all right, you know, let's host an online tournament. We can invite schools to come here. We can encourage them to play in like a land setting, and we will have our teams play in a land setting. But you know, it's going to be hosted online because we also can't ask them to pay for stuff. We don't want them to like pay an entry fee or anything. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's in like an official league or anything. Yeah. It's just an it's just a fun event. Yeah. And plus, so most leagues are getting over. It's like finals, um, semifinals, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And then also, you know, getting close to finals week. Mm-hmm. So like, we don't want something them to come, come super here. stressful. Yeah, be stressful out a bus situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we're doing that. And we're working with another guy who's on the JV team. He's helping. We're making a trophy. Um, or three. We're using the three D printers. We're yeah. Making, we're gonna make some sort of trophy for it. I don't know what they're cooking up, but apparently they got something going. So, and then we'll ship that out to, if it's Wherever. one of the other schools that wins, or if it's Varsity or JV that wins. Dude, that's yeah. actually so awesome. So, like, what goes into the process of creating something like this? And, and I think what I'm most curious about is how do you contact other teams, other schools? Like, who do you expect to come to this? And, like, what are you doing to advertise this? Well, there was about zero advertising. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so we, it was just a lot of reaching out. Um, Alex did a lot of it, but so we would meet some of these other schools in our leagues, and but you can also, through these leagues, you can just search up teams. You're like, all right, um, you know, University of Iowa. Okay. It's like you can scroll through the leaderboard <clears> and you can find them. And then you just find whoever's kind of their captain or it's just some team member, and you reach out, and you're like, hey, you know, we're hosting this event. Here's the time and dates. We'd love if you guys are interested, you know, to invite you guys out or whatever. And usually if it's not the captain, they'll put us in contact with the mm-hmm. captain. Um, and we just kind of talk to them. And so far we have six other teams, I think, competing. And we're trying to get our seventh. Mm-hmm. But we've had a lot of come drop in, drop out kind of yeah, teams. And it's yeah. like, well, we need somebody. <laughs> this is going to start like next week. We need somebody. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to get that right now. But – yeah, it took a lot of reaching out. Who are some of the teams that you guys have got? We have University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Um, is it all right if I put my Oh Yeah, have at it, yeah. Okay. Um, University, I think, did Iowa drop out? Let's see. We have DePaul, um, our two Iowa State teams, St. Ambrose, Utah, Kansas, and, yeah, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, UIUC. So... That's awesome, we man. Have, yep, we have that, and then we're trying to get one more right now. Well, so. yeah, and then if you do this, like, every year, like, this could just keep kind of going up and up. And, yeah, I mean, it's something that would, could just be, like, it could expand. Um, we're hoping that we don't have to do this next year and we can mm-hmm. have our open land because this is what's substituting for it, basically. Oh, okay. Because yeah. that open land experience, it's so much fun. You get, so we have, it's more than just Siege. It's Siege, COD, 
as much as I hate to say it, League. Yeah. <laughs> league of Legends. Um, hey, I'm a League player, all right? Not really. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I haven't played in a while, but I, uh, I grew up with League. so I, I know it's such a popular game that people love watching, but it's just such a toxic it's, game. It's one of the most horrific communities yeah. on any gaming it's platform. A, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so bad. Yeah. We have that Overwatch, Valorant. Um, I think we do Smash Bros. too. Oh, oh yeah. sick. But, and then all these schools are here for like the weekend. And then it's just everyone's here. We're all in, um, what's the aerospace engineering building? What's that called? Oh, yeah, just like the know. one right, right there. Yeah, the, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> yeah. just right there. Yeah. Um, I don't know, that Hoover, one. I think. Or is it How? How? I think it's How. It's like, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it's got that big little column in the center. Mm-hmm. But we shut up a bunch of tables in there. Everyone brings their computers. It's just a blast. And I, Iowa State hosts that? Yeah. And is there like a, a comfortable viewing experience for that? Or um, For you talking about like just for other like people? If, yeah, if in? I wanted to come and like watch that tournament. I'd say so. I mean, we do. I mean, we usually we have one stream that we put up and we can only stream so much, of course, mm-hmm. with one stream. So we try to stream different games as much as we can. Um, but like if there's like finals going on for one game, we're going to prioritize that over yeah, non-finals. Yeah. Um, so you can always watch the stream from home. If you want to come in and watch it, I know we play the stream up on a big, like, I think we get a projector. We play it up on the on one of the walls, and we have it sectioned off. Or you can just walk around and walk behind play mm-hmm. your and screens just watch, yeah. and just watch screens. We, people did that. Like, when I was subbing for JV, um, we had, like, an entire row behind us just watching over our shoulders like it was, yeah. it, was, it was awful it was, was my like, first experience was i was like so stressful but <laughs> no i totally get that because yeah. i'll go to some smash tournaments and then oh, yeah. i could just feel like i i can hear people talking and then it gets quiet and then mm. i can just feel their presence behind me and yeah. it's like now i'm gonna play like garbage Yo, it's, it's awful. <laughs> Yeah. No, I didn't know Iowa, Iowa State did that. Who who hosts that? Like who does that? Uh, that's our gaming and esports club, actually. Okay, it. and they pull that they yeah. pull that off. That's so, with so our awesome. officers, yeah. And there was some funding issues this year, so we weren't able to do it, which is sad. But I'm hoping next year we can. Cause yeah, it's such a fun experience. And then who normally goes to that? Is that just that's it's it varies by esport. Um, so our esports managers are involved with inviting people. They're the ones. And then they work with the esports coordinator officer to be like, all right, this is who's coming. This is how many people we want to invite. And so it varies. I know we've had teams from Ohio come. We've had teams from all around Iowa, um, Illinois, Missouri. So they travel out. And that one we actually do have, like, uh, prizes for winning in the tournaments. So I, I can't believe I haven't heard of this. That would be so yeah. cool to go and watch. It's I feel like there fun. needs to be more advertising for – I, These kinds of events, because I think so too. Um, <laughs> who's the new social chair? Phoebe, uh, Phoebe, oh. new social chair. Uh, Phoebe, come on, let's come on, let's let's let's, let's, let's get some advertising. Yeah, going. let's step this up a little bit. Yeah. Phoebe, come I on. think it's Phoebe. I think she's, <laughs> the, I think she's the elect <laughs> one. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do my best to plug for this because that sounds super exciting. Oh, I would love to go exciting. to. I I've never been to like an actual gaming tournament with mm-hmm. a substantial amount of people. Like it's oh, always just like neither have I in and a I classroom watch. like. Oh, no, it's, so we do it in just the main hall. Yeah. Like, so we're not even in a classroom. It's just everyone's just tables. I know. Wall to wall. And that would be so exciting. I want to see yeah. that so bad. It's, it was super cool. Yeah, that's, dude, that yeah. that's sweet. And so are are you going to try to kind of help with that next, oh, yeah, for next sure. semester and, for like, sure. get that going? Yeah, I, um, they were asking, the way I got involved with it originally, they were asking for some casters. And I was like, uh, I guess I can because one uh, Mike had reached out to me. He goes, "Do you want to cast for Siege?" I was like, "Uh, I can. Oh, <laughs> I don't. I don't think I've ever. So I've never awesome. done that." And he goes, "Yeah, I can." Um, and he goes, "All right. Well, you need to be here by this time." And then they're like, "Ben, we need you to sub for JV because one of our guys just didn't show up. Mm-hmm. He's, he's ghosted." I'm like, "All right." I grabbed all my stuff, <laughs> uh, showered quickly, and ran over. I was like, all right. You're casting so then, while playing. <laughs> uh, that would have been nuts. But no, so I played that match, and then I went up and casted, like, varsities and stuff. So it was it was really cool. But it takes a lot of time and effort, especially out with the officers. And so I would definitely, yeah, help out with that next year for sure. Oh, so yeah. It was, it was a blast. I loved it. Well, and you get to stay in, like, the Siege community while, if you aren't willing to, like, 
put in the time to practice all the mm. time and siege games can last a while and so yeah. like if you're not willing to like nose to the grindstone at least you can still be involved and help other mm -hmm. people like oh, yeah. and still enjoy siege oh, yeah. and oh, the yeah. casting is such a cool the opportunity fun, especially when something <laughs> crazy happens yeah i'm excited to cast with sam over yeah. this next weekend <laughs> yeah. i think we might be going crazy i was but, like, what day is it um so we'll be casting matches saturday and sunday next saturday and next, next sunday. saturday and next sunday um we have our group stage on Friday to kind of determine our bracket, mm -hmm. kind of determine seating, stuff like that. And then Saturday is our first round of, I guess you could say, matches. And we'll stream as many of those as we can. It's going to be hard because we're going to have like, you know, three, four games running at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's going to be then, your guys' first time yeah, doing, doing that. Like that. So it's going to so, be, it's like, it's going to be a little bit it's, of, it's going to be scuffed. Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to yeah, be, yeah, a little something. custy for yeah. sure. But. <laughs> um, and, but then we'll stream every match on Sunday because those are our final matches. Okay, I so. will definitely be tuning in Sunday. Oh, yeah. Um, like Twitch.tv. Twitch um, it's either ISU Gaming and Esports or Iowa State Gaming and Esports. That's, so. Yeah, I, I, that is really exciting. I'm, an ex I'm mm. excited to watch that. Yeah, I would love for you to tune in. Yeah, I'm I mean, a huge... We're, I'm we're, a, just, we're just going to be over in buyers. So. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. Well, can we watch you play in, in person? Um, I mean... So we have the players in a set, set room. I don't know if you've been into the esports room at all. I have, yeah, yeah. So you know how there's like that glass room? The glass room? thing? Yeah, so that's our actual like esports players room. Um, so our players will be in there. And then we're actually, we actually rented a room. I think it's like just right across the hall um, that we're going to be casting in. So I guess if you want to you wanna stop by, feel Are, free. Is there going to be a visual for casting? Like um, Sam wants to do a camera for it. Okay. He wants to put a cam. On yeah. It, then so. you guys can wear suits. <laughs> yeah. He, he wants to put a cam. Uh, if he gets it, he gets it. I yeah. guess. But I was we'll like, to see what if anybody will figure it out, if he's if he has the motivation, Sam was one of those people where if he has the motivation to do something, he's, he's going do to do it. He's like, do it. oh yeah, for sure. It almost excites him how difficult it's going to be <laughs> to get it done, and then he gets it done. I asked for an update. He goes. Yeah, I checked the library, you know, they don't have any microphones. I'm going to need you to bring yours. I got mine. Yeah. I got three monitors. I got my PCs ready. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I, I'm super excited to watch the most, like, scuffed online. Oh, it's like, it's going to be scuffed, tournament. but I'm excited for it. No, that that's super awesome. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're talking about, like, starting to do this or kind of allocating your time to doing more of this mm -hmm. stuff, which – is really awesome and so do you have other plans or things that you want to maybe continue doing in the future are you just going to become like this kind of member or do you have plans on returning to play or like what are your plans for the future yeah. for the esports team i don't know if i'm going to return to play or not um just because if it's such a time commitment and i am enjoying this mm -hmm. i might return as an esports manager um next year we'll see i don't know thought about it but alex and i do have Bigger plans. I don't know how much I can say. Okay. Um, but bigger plans to move collegiate esports in a very, very positive direction. Um, that could, especially public school collegiate esports. Um, oh, you're, get, you're getting me excited because um, we're constantly um, thinking of ideas and stuff, and we have a plan. Um, that sort of started in motion, and this is gonna. This event is also kind of a test run for us uh -huh. to kind of see how well we can do it and if we can pull it off. Um, I'm very excited and very motivated for um, the future. We got a lot of people on board to help us, and so if we could set it up and get it to work, it's gonna be. It's gonna make collegiate esports pretty pretty. Uh, popular i think you're, i think it'll make it pop very you're, you're getting me pretty pumped because I, I i hate to do that because now like i feel like it's just gonna drop yeah and then, and then you're <laughs> so say, sad it's gonna be the worst but, tournament ever <laughs> no i believe in you guys well this in this tournament i mean we'll see what happens with this i but. was gonna say well and even if it fails like mm -hmm. you learn from it and do it again yeah you know what oh, i mean yeah. like I, I doubt the motivation will crumble i don't think so like, i don't think it will perfectly well, because I was just talking to um, an episode that's coming out this week, and then mm -hmm. you'll be after. I was just talking to Nakota about esports and how, mm -hmm. like, I think when Overwatch One came out uh, in like what twenty nineteen or eighteen Something or whatever, like, like everyone was like, 
esports is going to be huge. Like, it's going to be replacing normal sports on television. Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be broadcasted everywhere because everyone's yeah. interested in this new Overwatch game. And leagues has always been big. Super yeah, like Smash has been pretty big. CS:GO yeah. has always been big. It's like here it is, and then like it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't get as big as people wanted it to be. Yeah. And so now we have. Then we had COVID, which is when all of like everyone just started playing games because yep. they had nothing better you didn't to have do. Anything else to do? Yeah, you, could, you were locked down. You couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and Sam. I mean, like, Sam was telling me that like he'd be in his dorm gaming for ten hours a day because class was just online, yeah, online. and so easy during COVID. Yeah, I mean that was my. During that year, that was my senior year, and when it like actually canceled classes, I didn't do anything. Like I was playing Siege when they when they sent the call. They're like, "Yeah, we're gonna be, uh, we're not coming to class for two weeks." Uh huh. It's like we're all just sitting there in the Xbox. We're like, Whoa. "Yeah." Well, like we like we didn't think. I mean, we inside after we're like, "Yeah," but at the same time, we're like, "This is actually serious." Yeah, it's kind of weird. It was crazy. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a big deal. <laughs> and they're like, that's that's kind of crazy. And they're like. But we don't gotta go back to school for two yeah. weeks. <laughs> so here comes Siege, yeah. right? And then that two weeks turned into three months, three months. and then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, the whole summer. Yeah, you're not coming like, back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. You're like, oh, uh, it's coming, becoming okay. my full time job. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, and, and so you have like this story arc where it's like, this is the perfect moment for esports to be big. Cause you yeah. already had like basement dwellers who played games all the time. Oh, yep. Now they're joined by everyone else everyone because else. COVID. Oh, yeah. And so like, you have all these trained people like wanting to get into games and mm-hmm. you have a lot of people it's easier now than ever just to be in your dorm all the time or like to be at home all the time playing games, just playing games online so easy communication so easy like you know what i mean you mm-hmm. could take classes online and still yeah. game all the time and so it's like this is where esports can get like big yeah and i think what really needs to like push esports to get to that like i guess national level or worldwide level where you get this all this recognition is the college level I, yeah, and that, like I said, there's not a whole lot of support from it. Personally, in my mind, eventually the NCAA has to sanction it. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Well, but <laughs> how long that takes, I don't know. But. Well, yeah, because you have like, I mean, I'll go to Smash Bros. because that's the, mm. that's the competitive scene that I know. Oh, it's, but like, you you have these thirty year olds who have been running the Smash game like on top. And then you just have like this fourteen year old kid come and just wallop. Whoop. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> and so it's so like crazy. the the younger people are the ones inspiring people to play games. Mm-hmm. The younger people are the ones like taking the news, like this eighteen year old prodigy is destroying competitive yeah. games. Mm-hmm. And then you have like and all these people are going to college and they're in this collegiate level and they're yeah. like, Yeah, I play on the side and then they stop playing games because they don't have an avenue to really pursue it. Yeah. But if you were to create something like that, I mean, if there's because that's another thing too, like the connection between college and pro league, or even if you just want to try to get up to the pro league, I don't know what it is for Smash, but like for Siege, you know, you got to start like on like a tier three team, and most people don't even know what that is. It's yeah. like you have to like find a team, join it, or you have to make your own team, like. And it takes a lot of time even just to get go up through and get recognized. Mm-hmm. Like getting on a pro team isn't just as simple as uploading, you know, YouTube clips or streaming and showing that you're good. No, you have to go through. And it's, that process is unknown to a lot of people um, and, and confusing too. It's yeah, confusing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if we can just bridge that gap between collegiate and pro, kind of like, you know, just normal sports. I can see it blasting off, honestly. Well, yeah, I mean, and that, and that is a good point about like you have these people who want to take it bigger, but they just they see the tunnel of where they can go, and it's just too far. Yeah, it's like I can't. So far. Like I, I don't want to do that. Yeah, and what I think is what what is such a untapped market is you have college people playing, but more importantly, you have college people viewing, and so it's like. You have a ton of people who, like, in a, in a case like you, where it's like, I'm starting this internship, I'm starting this job, I don't have enough time to allocate to playing the yep. game, but I do have time to allocate to watching, watching it. it. Yep. And, like, these are people my age, I'm interested in the game, the game's super, because I watch a ton of games, yep. but I don't play a ton of yeah. games, because that's just, that's fair. I can do it while I eat, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, while, while you're on the treadmill. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, while I'm working out, like, now. I can do yeah. it at any time. Um, and so I get to kind of like watch these people who are masters. And that's why I love talk, talking to people who, that's kind of like the point of this podcast is yeah. I don't have to 
grind to get enjoy these things. I can just talk to people who are really talented at these mm. things and then kind of oh, appreciate it. You're, I mean, the varsity team, I don't want to understate how impressive that is. It's like you have a ton of people who really want to be on that varsity team. So, I mean, it's really good that, yeah, that you I, made it up it, there. It was a push. Yeah, yeah it <laughs> it's a grind, push. man. It's a grind. It's a grind. Okay. And, and so, you know, to hear that you're trying to push this, you know, this collegiate level of games mm -hmm. and specifically Siege is like, dude, I'm I'm on I'm on your team on this. That's I that's so it. sick. We need as many people as we can. <laughs> it's so I sick, you, man. It's it takes a lot of publicity too. Is what we need. I think that's the main thing. Is the NCA doesn't see how much money can be made from it. Mm -hmm. If they realize that you know you give out scholarships for this, you're gonna have people lined up. I guarantee you're gonna have people lined up. Like. There's well, just not enough sponsorship and support for it right now. Just imagine imagine going to a school because they have a really good e R6 team. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, the same reason mm -hmm. as you'd get a scholarship to go on the football team, you're getting a scholarship like, to go on the yeah, Rainbow the Six Siege team. team. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. And that's the thing, too, is Rainbow Six Siege it isn't, I mean, it's going to die eventually. Mm -hmm. They say it's going to last 10 years or however many Siege, please don't last that long. Yeah. Make a new game. <laughs> so, so do but, do something else, please. But um, it's just these. There's always more and more games coming out, so there's always just new fields, new views, um, like just different styles of games that are coming out that you can just compete at a whole different level. Um, they're all good. I think mic's <laughs> picking up my voice sometimes, so um, it's just switching to it's an just empty camera. To <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. Yeah, but. There's so many new games coming out, and it entertains so many more people. Like, I think Hearthstone, which is like a card, uh -huh. kind of, online card game, was really popular at one point. Like, we we had a Hearth Hearthstone team. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I don't even know people who play this game, but apparently it's it's big. competitive and big. Yeah. And so it's just like you can have people with that. You know, you have League Siege, um, Rocket League. Rocket, Rocket League is huge. so much fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've watched competitive Rocket League. It is nuts. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. It's like one of the most technical games on the planet. It's, it's crazy. You got these people doing musty flicks is what they yeah. call them. I'm like, dude, I can drive up the wall and fall off. Yeah, like, I was going to say, I, <laughs> I can't even find the ball, let yeah. alone <laughs> go to hit it. Doing so. all this, hitting it out of the air, aerials and stuff. But it's, it's so much fun to watch. There's so many different ways you can go with it. I mean... I had a buddy freshman year who I don't think he goes here anymore, but he would um, put bets and play like um, Madden games for real money. Mm -hmm. Like you just bet money on for yourself. Oh, Madden's on huge Madden. too. Yeah. yeah, like this is just video game football, and <laughs> people watch it and play it. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, we have the XFL and the NFL now, so you can watch it football throughout the entire year but this is video game football and people still choose to watch it there's so much money to be made in the scene it's such an it's such an untapped market i yeah. mean you have fortnite tournaments that have pots of that a million dude, dollars fortnite. <laughs> it came out of nowhere yeah, and it's like you obviously have a group of people but what you don't have is you don't have a group of people who are in the game who like playing the game who are working on these projects yeah what you have are like 50 year olds who have never touched the game, mm -hmm. who don't know exactly what they're doing. And then now they're making things like the eSports Olympics that are so horrifically bad. Oh, it's a that joke. like, it's a joke. <laughs> that like, <laughs> no wonder eSports hasn't taken off because this is what you're doing. Like, you, it's, need, you need younger people who are actually in these games to lead this. Mm -hmm. and, and it's hard though because those same younger people, they're not. They're not as motivated to make money off they, it. They just want to play the game, they, too. <laughs> they, yeah, they just they want to play it, and you have people who are... I mean, a person who has spent a ton of time playing the game is not going to be the same person as someone who really loves the yeah. game and wants to, like, advertise it. Yep. Those are, like, different different kinds of people, so it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. to find it, and that's why I think it's cool that, like, we have a team here who has played but now kind of wants to, like, push, it, push it more because that's... I mean... Again, it's yeah. such an untapped market of, of oh, yeah. content. Oh yeah. Because I mean, like I said, the one the only the only stuff I watch on YouTube is just people playing just games. Just playing games. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's like I don't really have the time to play games anymore, mm -hmm. but I still want to like 
feel that technical aspect. I want to feel that learning and like mm -hmm. that understanding, getting into something, yeah. but I don't have to actually play it. Mm, and I mean, could you even think, like think about that too? Those like Fortnite tournaments, Ninja. He came out of nowhere. He used to play Halo. Yeah. <laughs> like he had like a small following. Then he, Fortnite came out, brand new game. That's another thing too. You can have gamers switching to new games. Yeah. You can have players that are like, oh yeah, no, I used to play Siege, but now I play CS2. Mm -hmm. which, another game coming out. Yeah. But CS2. Then he's going crazy. You got people like Shroud. Mm -hmm. You can have these people who are big icons. And since it's not something that's super physically demanding, these people can play for ages. Mm -hmm. And you can have new people coming up, you know, like 14 year olds playing Smash. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. Com yeah. like competitive Smash. I think I saw something too. There was like this seven year old, like super good Pokemon player. Pokemon. That's what I'm saying. There's just such a big market for this that I think if done well can just, it can be great, but I think it's just so spread out and not, I guess, I don't want to say centralized. I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It's just not together. Yeah. We're not, we're not all working on the same team yeah. on this. And yeah. I, and I, I, bringing up Ninja was something that I didn't even think about because you can add so much personality to playing a game that you can't add to a sport. Yeah. So, like, Tom Brady, when he's on the field, isn't like, oh, that's Tom Brady. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, think about Dr. Disrespect. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, dude, the dude's like, whole personality. He's wearing <laughs> sunglasses while playing games. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. those, these people are so easily marketable because they already have the type of personality that they had to... Per, you know, persuade people to watch yeah. them do it. So, like, that's why Ninja was on TV trying to get people to floss on... Exactly, <laughs> and floss on TV. Yeah. And it's like, it was... you can't, you can't yeah. get a football player to do that. No. You know what I mean? And, and football is... A, I don't mean to... Football is just the easiest example because I feel like it gets people upset when you compare esports to football. But, yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'm not... They can both exist, and that's the thing yeah. that people are frustrated by. It's like... It's not better than football. No, it's just not, it's not by different. Any means. It's just different. I love I love seeing dudes get folded like pancakes. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's like it's just it's something else that I want to push forward and I want to see. You know, yeah, it's like popular. why can't we make all of these other people happy yeah. as well? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like these people who want to watch, who want to see, who want to watch their favorite gamer win a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars at a tournament. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. who, who who doesn't want to go into college and be like I can actually make this my dream. And like, I can, yeah, I can pursue this. I can pursue this and make money doing this. And like, mm -hmm. I have a bunch of support. I have people watching me. Like, I'm famous at Iowa State mm -hmm. for being a good Rainbow Six Siege player. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it, it'd, it's, be, it'd be crazy. It, it's the dream, man. And it, I that if you told me like when I was like five that people would be making money, um, like professional money from playing video games, I wouldn't have believed. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. like no way. No. That would be a dream no. come true. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm doing that. That's what I'm doing. I'm playing uh -huh. video games for the rest of my life, mom. No, like, it's something that could become a reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which could honestly, I I'd, I'd be all right with it. I'd yeah. Be all right. Well, so. you know, and, and I think I think the biggest criticism that you'll get from people though is like, there there is this very true stigma with gamers, um, about like laziness, um, oh, yeah. like overweight, and then like pursuing something that doesn't, um that won't provide, like, intrinsic value mm -hmm. as opposed to, like, I guess, other things. Um, and so you would have to find a way to combat that. But yeah. I think, I think what I struggle, what I struggle with is you ha these people already exist um, and by huge margins in college, too. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, let's get them socialized. Let's give them passion. Let's give them yeah. something to work towards at the very least if they're going to yeah. do this anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. They're going to be doing it anyway, yeah. but it's just we can give them an option to, you know, at least make it worth their time mm -hmm. and give them something out of it. Give them a sense of community. Yeah. Give them a sense of, like... That's, yeah, and that's another thing, too. The eSports Club, such a, it's a good community. You know, you can find somebody to play, um, I'll say, almost any game, but there are some games that it's just like... Yeah, nobody's gonna play this. Yeah, <laughs> the Roblox. E e yeah, sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's it's a future that I'm excited for for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's cool to it's cool that you guys are 
working towards that and because when I when I saw the esports club at like club fest mm-hmm. and whatnot, I, I I like saw them and and it just didn't seem and I went to the esports room and it's like a really cute. Yeah, small, yeah. Like just a bunch of computers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Four TVs. It's just yeah. it's a nice, cute little, cute little area, and it's like hang out with your friends. So like yeah. one Saturday, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <year. laughs> yeah, you go there once, yeah. because you want to give them business. You want to you want to try it out. Yeah, it's like ah, it's not that great. Yeah, it's like I go leave it. Yeah, it's like, I could just do this mm-hmm. here. <laughs> yeah, I could just do this from the comfort of my room. Yeah, and so but. it's like you'd think esports would be huge at, mm-hmm. at college, and then you get there and you're like, I really do have to make this work. No, yeah, and it's, so it's going to take a lot of time, especially to bring it up. But when you're talking about the esports tournament, it just made me think. I want to say, I don't know if it was Iowa or just another school in Iowa, but they just built a new esports arena. Whoa! Yeah, a whole arena just for esports. That will be yeah, yeah, because that's like league. When league has the big finals, like they are in Jack Tri Stadium, yeah, like, <laughs> like full packed yeah to watch these you know 12 people play league yeah <laughs> yeah right. it's just and and they're screaming when someone gets like a yeah. good flash or something and you're yeah. like whoa oh like, my God. <laughs> it's like the most hype people are literally eating popcorn like mm-hmm. watching it and you have i went to one of the coolest things it was so it was a interesting group of people as you'd imagine but <laughs> i went up to you and i with my brother to watch a viewing so they had it on the projector they ordered domino's pizza mm-hmm. and we had like 25 30 people just like all yeah. hype watching and then there was a league tournament like in the same room and so oh, we're just okay. playing league while watching league. league and it was gotcha. just like this is cool even though um, like i wouldn't i would i would never pursue this it's really awesome that it exists yeah and, like these oh, people yeah. are happy and like they are in a blast. I know they were so they were, excited. They were so much fun. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee that. Yeah. <laughs> like they were having a blast. Yeah, they're so and the community's so good. And then you can have people like that's why I love casting because it's like these are people mm. bringing personality to it, making it hype, and making it exciting. If like, you don't have good casters, it can kill it. Oh, but if yeah. you have people who are going crazy on like a single kill, like it bring it makes it brings so much joy to it. I remember watching the Overwatch casters last year for Open Land. They were going nuts. <laughs> yeah. I was, oh my God. <laughs> Reinhardt just got three kills. <laughs> and popping and, off screaming. Yeah, and like, just jumping up and down. I'm like, these dudes are crazy, but I love the energy. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I want to see. And it makes it it makes it so much more accessible to new viewers too. Mm-hmm. Like you're getting it explained to you. The, like, yeah, they're bridging that gap between yeah. the esports players' minds with all of their knowledge, and then the people who are just watching it and mm-hmm. none of their knowledge. Yeah, because so. I because I was watching. I watched Sam play uh, a little bit of one of his Twitch streams. Oh, I bet that was interesting. It, it's <laughs> fun. It's fun. He's <laughs> he's very. Uh, Energetic, oh, yeah. uh, Energetic, emotional say, sure. <laughs> <Steve> player, um, <laughs> but he, <laughs> I'm watching him, and I told him this on the episode, but he'll like, he's just standing in one spot, and he just like shoulder bashes one wall, and then puts his scope in there, and he can like see half of a screen, and oh, he's just watching yeah. one one point, and yep. it's like, imagine that situation with no casting. Like, you're not getting told strategy. Yeah. You're not getting told why he's doing that. You're just mm-hmm. watching a dude stand there. Yeah, you got this dude who's looking at this little pixel peak. Yeah. And he's like, but, like, you know, that pixel peak can be crazy. I know there's some maps you can pixel peak people off of, like, spawn. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Dude. It's like. And like, um, yeah, no, if you, I was watching that, I didn't know anything about it. I'm like, what is this guy doing? And then all of a sudden, there's a kill. Yeah, and you're like, what? Whoa. <laughs> like, you're like, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you get somebody casting in there and then, you know, something cool happens, it's it makes the viewing experience so much better. It elevates it by it yeah. makes it a show. It makes mm-hmm. it broadcastable, yep. like a TV. Because that's another thing, and I, I was wondering on a technical level, um, with like League and Smash, or even League, uh, not as much, but especially with Smash, like you're watching one screen. Mm-hmm. With Siege, you have five or ten screens, ten, screens. ten cameras, like yeah. things that you can look through. Like different. How do you decide like who you're watching, like who you're commentating on, like how do you not it's, miss moments? Oh, it's so hard. It's, yeah. <laughs> you have to get somebody who's like who's done it, um, or I guess is just naturally good with it. I guess I don't know a whole lot about it. I have done it a little bit 
um, with Cass in a couple of our varsity matches before. Um, but it's hard. You just have to be listening. As, as a gamer, you have to be listening for any sort of big cues going on. Like if you hear gunfire or if you see somebody's HP go down, like if you are, at least for Siege, when you're in a casting um, point of view, you can see everyone's health. You can see their ammo, all mm -hmm. their gadgets, stuff like that. So you got to be watching everything. You got to be looking on the map, see where people are placed. And it's like, oh, there's an engagement that's going to happen here. You know something's going to happen. Yeah. And then you just have to... Some people do it on mouse and keyboard. I don't know how, but I do it on a controller because it's just easier. And you got to get over there. You got to find, figure, get out to that next person's point of view. And you're like, get into a, you know either a free cam or something. But it takes just a lot of practice, I guess I'll say, to I'll get say. to those key moments. And it's hard. Well, especially with C, just like one shot and you're dead when most yeah. altercations. So it's like, that would be so stressful trying to like, find which person to look at mm -hmm. and how to capture the most content. Yep. It's hard, but when you can, it's some of the best content that you can get. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you get the casters going crazy. Yeah, and you get the reactions yeah. of the players because I'd imagine they get oh, pretty... Oh, if, if you can get a face cam for the <laughs> players or like a camera and you see them, like, I love watching rage deaths, uh -huh. like rage dodges, stuff like that. I think they're hilarious. If you get somebody dying and slamming his dad, yeah, he's like throwing his headphones down, like he's standing up, throwing yeah. fists, uh, wanting to just break his monitor. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny, <laughs> but it, it elevates the game and it elevates the viewing experience. It, so. it makes it so much more exciting. Yeah. And and the way I dis I've described Siege, and something that I discovered playing Valorant a little more, to where I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. this, like I, I'm understanding conceptually, Siege is much more like chess than it is a shooter. It's a strategy. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a strategy game. It's a much more strategy yeah. game because, like, it really is just one shot. Like That's all it like takes. You, you need to position yourself. You need to know where the positions yep. are. You need to actually coordinate. Like, it's not like Overwatch where you yep. have 400 HP and you can, like, jump mm -hmm. in, jump out. He, like, it's yep. just not what it's like. No, like, you, it really is. You could win a round with five bullets. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. all it takes. Yeah. You could win a round with five bullets. <laughs> it's like, and, and that goes back to the pixel the pixel camping to where it's mm -hmm. like if i died from something like that because i was just walking and then i just got deleted from somebody that i could Dude. have never seen the rage that i would feel oh, <laughs> would be like insurmountable so, so like when those pixel peaks first started happening like on siege i was still playing on xbox at the time when I tell you the amount of times I squeezed my <laughs> controller so hard trying not to throw it across my room just because of how angry I would be because you can't even see them half the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they see just this one new pixel that changed color and then just, tunk, yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, you're done for. And now you're just gray screening watching cameras. Yep, it's like, all right, yeah. next cam. Uh, and so, yeah, do you think that C just helped control your anger management or has made you an angrier person? I would honestly say it's helped me learn how to control it because especially back then it was like, I can't buy it. I can't afford a new controller, dude. dude. <laughs> like if I break this controller, I can't buy a new one for like two weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, uh, it's like, yeah, I can't, I can't be affording to break this. So it's, it's just a constant a lot test. Of, yeah. It's constant test of how far my mental stability can go before I break. Something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause, and, and I think that, Siege, I think, is the angriest community, but I think that League is the most toxic. Oh, I because when you sure. die in League, you have like a forty-five second you have a wait timer, timer here, right? Yeah, yeah, and you're just gray screen. There's nothing that you can do. Like, there's no support that you can give no. people. You just like looked around the map. Yeah, all like... you can do is just type. <laughs> so it's like they're literally like giving you an opportunity to just be the worst human. Yeah, like every time you die. So much trash. <laughs> yeah, because like you just have forty five seconds to all chat and just mm -hmm. like talk to the other team. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's and, and I think that's it's a very important distinction. <laughs> uh, Siege is an angry community for sure. I can't. Oh, I got so many messages because oh, I do those pixel peaks too. Because I'm, you know, it's Siege. You have yeah. to. If they're doing <laughs> yeah. it to me, yeah. I have to do yeah. it. Yeah. You know, glitches, stuff like that, uh -huh. toxic strats, whatever. Uh, the, the amount of messages, hate messages you get is 
<laughs> it really, Athlete. Uh, like, uh, so really, of this stuff cannot be said. It's yeah, like it really, oh, really, <laughs> really thickens your skin. Yeah. Being, <laughs> being able to just receive that kind of stuff. Oh man, it makes me laugh every time. It just puts a smile on my face that I just made somebody mad over yeah. one death. <laughs> and now I don't know if I talked to Sam about this, but just imagining if they had a death chat, like even just oh. for like two seconds, like proximity death chat when you kill somebody. And they can just, the stuff you would hear. <laughs> I don't think Siege could be up on the, the internet. Yeah. Some of the stuff yeah. that would be said. Oh, because, and that's what I love about PUBG was I the proximity. The, the, the proximity chat PUBG was amazing. <laughs> it was I such a genius it. idea. Because yeah. uh, nobody was taken, I mean, except for the plane rides at the beginning. Mm. Those were pretty brutal. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just a yeah. lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, of, <laughs> you know, words that yeah. shouldn't be said. Yeah, you know, you know what was going on in those shouldn't come out of chats. people's mouths. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. And, and then, they they had, then they had that to COD with Modern Warfare Two and Warzone. 2. With Warzone, yeah. Oh, I played a good amount of DMZ when it first dropped, um, which is like Warzone Two's like other game mode. Okay, pretty fun. Fair. Um, but it was it was so funny something going in there with some of the game chats, and you just be like. Where are you? I'm coming to fight you. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You just hear him talking, and you're just like, I'm looking for you, stuff like that, and just other things that would be said, like, dude, we can be friends. I swear, I'll, I'll drop you all my please, money. Please. I'll drop you all my money. We can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> just let me extract, man. Yeah, come on, come on, just once, yeah, just once. Just please, just let me live, let me live. Yeah, the competitive, what, what would you say, the, what do you like watching the most, like, as far as the competitive scene? Is it Siege? Um, I probably watch Siege the most. Um... I enjoy watching COD a little bit just because of old school COD gamer. Mm -hmm. um, but then honestly, I hate to say it, but uh, Rocket League. I really enjoy watching Rocket League. I, I Again, I think it's one of those games that it takes a lot of technical skill. Mm -hmm. And it's just super fun to watch. And it's super popular. Yeah. And, and the tournaments, like hundreds of thousands of dollars for winners. Which is insane. Nuts. <laughs> nuts. <laughs> Absolutely split nuts. with a maximum of four people. Yeah. Like, you can get, you can get quads, but most of the time it's like duos. Yeah. And you're 50,000 50, each for, for doing what you like doing. Yeah. For 20, for like an hour. Yeah. Like, count, that's sign nuts. me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm there, man. Yeah. I was like, count me in. Sign my, take my signature. Yeah. We're going. <laughs> like, well, what's nice about Rocket League specifically is you can't watch it and not know what's going on. Yeah, like you can't That's, watch it yeah. and not understand ball go into hoop Oop. score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not even yeah. it's just it's, it's some like the setups and stuff. Maybe you don't get, but at the same time, it's like watching soccer. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't really particularly enjoy watching soccer. I watched like the World Cup when the USA was playing. Mm -hmm. um, and I watched with my buddy at our apartment um, a little bit, but I don't particularly enjoy watching that. But Rocket League. <laughs> Car soccer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm right there. Dude, I'm right there. I'm watching, bro. I'm getting a high. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you should have musty flick into some sort of triple weird, combo. Like, uh, I don't know, air flip and just. Like some of the things that those Rocket League players can do is crazy. And you know their controller sounds like oh, like they're hitting a million yeah. buttons. I guarantee they're buying a new controller like every other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause There's no way those controllers are lasting. Yeah, just. Absolutely nuts, nuts. I think the com breaking them. The competitive scene is, I just again. I I had an episode, I was talking to another gamer mm -hmm. last episode, which is awesome because I yeah. love talk. I don't get to talk about games enough. Um, <laughs> and he was telling me that people are still playing Apex. Yeah, Legends. Dude, no, Apex is still it's still big. It's still kicking. Yeah, no, and our our ISU team's pretty good at it too. They just won like a couple tournaments in it that, or something. That's so insane because yeah. I haven't heard about Apex since because it, it was like. Fortnite came out, and then Apex was like, this is going to be the new Fortnite. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is going to be as big, and then it just was not. And then, But then, yeah. apparently, it's still kicking. It's so. still kicking. Um, I still don't know how Fortnite's still kicking, personally. Uh, I dropped that game a while yeah, ago. Yeah, it's just but, because it's free. Probably. Like, that has to be a big, for, like, little kids. Like, yeah, this is a free game be. that it's fine. It's it's cartoonish. Like, I yeah. can still shoot people and, like, mm. it not be super gory. Like, yeah. it's it definitely kids. I get that. But it's just, I still don't know how it's, how it's <laughs> yeah. still kicking. I'm yeah. just like, dude, this game's got to die. I was like, say, we need to replace. Can't live. We, we, need, replace we need something this. new. Yeah. Um, but I remember when Fortnite first came out, I 
I played it like the second day after it came out. No, I didn't heard of it. I, was, mm-hmm. I just was bored. I was scrolling through the store and I was like, oh, oh that looks kind of fun. I uh-huh. saw it. Saw it. I was like, yeah, it was pretty fun. And then it just got massive, super fast. And I was like, well, what okay, was then. weird is Fortnite was a, a zombie f- survival game originally. Yeah. First, yeah, and mm-hmm. like that, they had that zombie survival mode as like a as the main game, and then the battle royale was, was free. Yeah, it was a secondary. Yeah, because PUBG came out first, I believe. Yes. And then I think before that it was even H one Z one. H one Z one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so then that came out, and then Fortnite's like, oh well, let's just throw in a battle royale option, and then mm-hmm. just like. Make it free, see what happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, like, it blew up. It was, it was the biggest. And then they made their... I'm pretty sure they made the zombie mode free. Yeah, and then they were like, yeah, this is actually... <laughs> this isn't really working out. And then they just took out the zombie mode altogether. Just like, yeah. Here's Fortnite. Oh, really? That's just gone? I believe so. I mean... I don't know. I don't know. I haven't touched that game. And I don't want to touch the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, I can smell the game from here. Yeah, but... I just don't want to touch it. Well, Because I remember, like, Jacksepticeye was, like, playtesting the game... Like when it was the zombie game, really? and so then everyone's like, "Fortnite is like the biggest game," and I was like, "The like plants versus zombies like <laughs> <laughs> game is that what we're talking yeah. about?" And they're like, "No, it's like huge, it's massive, yeah." It and then such a following so fast too, yeah. It and was crazy. H one Z one, wow, yeah. You brought that back because I played PUBG pretty early. Really? Like I was in the like beta playing PUBG because oh, I gotcha. watched like a YouTuber play it, mm-hmm. and I was like, "This looks kind of fun." It was the first battle royale I'd ever heard of. And oh, so, like, okay. I was like, this is this is kind of interesting. And then, like, it blew up. Mm-hmm. I got it for free. Like, Dang, yeah, and then it was, like, 30 bucks after that. I mean, so I got nice. it for free, too, on PC. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I had to pay, like, 20, 30 bucks for it on Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> when it came out on Xbox, I was so hyped because I'd watch, you know, people play, like, Shroud and people Shroud, like that. yeah. And I was like, this looks like so much fun. Is Shroud uh, still playing? I don't know if he still plays PUBG anymore. I know he's been playing a lot of CS2. Um, <laughs> I know he's played a little bit of Valorant. Um, I don't even know. I haven't watched any of his streams lately. I was to say I haven't watched Trout in a while, yeah, but I remember. I, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was a big yeah. like. I liked watching the competitive gamers because it was like these people have skill. The competitive PUBG was nuts. Dude, yeah, when it started. yeah. Like people sniping from like. Oh, you'd be like six hundred meters. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. I I can't even see him. Like I'm watching on my little phone screen. Mm-hmm. Where are they? Yeah, and the game has like unlimited content too. Oh like, yeah, and then they added those new maps, which is really hype. And mm-hmm. it was like there's a lot of maps in there now. Yeah, there's it's all so the new awesome. guns. Yeah, new... I think there's a there's a mortar in there too. I'm pretty sure. Whoa, that would be awesome. Did it? Yeah, Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> <You're good>. <laughs> tweaking. <laughs> no, they had, there's a they added. A, I'm pretty sure they added a mortar, which is why I don't know. Yeah, but I was gonna say it now. makes a. I say if they're gonna do because the Fortnite they add the, you know they had, they used to have the controllable missile and like just yeah. a bunch of stuff and the, the hamster ball with a grappling hook that would just like destroy it, it yeah, was like that was like early stuff too and then they came out with like mechs and it was like <laughs> there's um dragon ball z stuff in there that yeah. was star wars <laughs> lightsabers like i'm like dude what is going on it's just it's literally just like a kid in the sandbox like, yeah I it wanna, is all sandbox yeah i want to like yeah. beat people up as goku and here's you, the game you can you, yeah <laughs> here's like, the game you, you can, can just do go it just Wallop on everybody, yeah, and waffle stomp on them. With yeah, <laughs> yeah. Goku, <laughs> and that's what, that's what makes me a little uncomfortable when like adults are playing it because it is kind of like a kids game it's almost. Very, it's very cartoonish. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like I'm watching like a 26 year old with pink hair like playing the game. And it's like okay, this is getting a little weird. Yeah, like, maybe Ninja. you should go back to PUBG or something. Yeah, Nin- <laughs> Ninja's hair choices, color choices were a little interesting. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, I'll never. Game. I'll say I'll never forget him being like media, like him becoming a celebrity, and yeah. so he's on like newspapers, like on magazines, crazy. and like on TV, and getting mm-hmm. interviewed, like acting in yeah. commercials and Just stuff. Just playing like, Fortnite. Yeah, I, that so was crazy. Well, and then they had the whole, and I think this is still a thing. The phase, like the phase clan, and they started like a YouTube Dude. thing. I, they like, here's the FaZe house. And I we... loved watching the FaZe Clan. <laughs> yeah. kid. I, I can't lie. I watched Rain. I still watch Jev to this day. Yeah, FaZe um, Jev. Oh, Adapt, Blaze. I loved watching them, those guys. And then, like, they all just, like, went down the drain. Yeah, that's like, what I was apparently, saying. Apparently, like, FaZe is, like, bankrupt. Well, because yeah. you had this, like, huge opportunity. It's like, we're going to start this big company. We have this mm. team of people who are going to do things. And then it just like, they just dropped the ball. They 
they really well, I think a lot of them it. just stopped playing games and they all started doing like vlogs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And another thing I think failed on it too was none of them were pro players anymore. Because that was, that was such the cool thing about it is you were watching these p- people, these players who were the pro players. Mm-hmm. These were the players that were going and playing, you know, Black Ops 2 competitively. Like Rain. I remember watching Rain play in competitive. But now it's just, it's all these other people and those people all maybe are recording videos, but you don't really hear about them. You just hear about the top guys who were, you know, playing the game 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, those are the faces and not the actual players. Yeah, and so, it, yeah, and it's I think weird. That's what fell off, at least for me, that's what it fell yeah, off. Yeah, it became more about like becoming a marketable person than it yeah. did like actually being good at the game. Mm-hmm. When the initial hook was like these people are interesting characters, and they also just rock people's yeah. world at the game, dude. Just, crazy at the just game, demolishing. Because yep. again, it's like I don't know, gaming is gaming is this huge thing, and we're all just kind of waiting for it to be as big as we we're expecting it to, but. And we're all expecting it to, and I really hope that it meets or exceeds our expectations. But mm-hmm. then part of me is like, what if it doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be really sad if it doesn't. I, I was say, because I think what happens to a lot of people is they they get really good. They want to be really good. But then they find out there's more money in just content creation. Mm-hmm. Like, there's more money if I just make videos and, like, yeah. make it fun or be a personality and stream, and stream 12 you know, hours a day. Like, yeah, I can just sit at home, wake up put on a sweatshirt and stream for like four hours, get these people who are donating me money for mm-hmm. absolutely zero reason. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yeah, here's $100. And I just streamed for like two hours. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's 50 bucks an hour. I was like, yeah. Like, <laughs> and like, I got to scream maybe once or twice when I die. And like, yeah. Get and I got to play games. Yeah. Like, and read the chat a little bit, answer, you know, mm-hmm. people's chat, say questions. hi. Yeah. Whatever. Like, that's... Uh, to me, that just seems so easy. Yeah, there's, there's a ton more money, and and there is, there is a skill in like quantity of content of like, oh, yeah. okay, I need to like, I need to post a hundred videos before I'm even gonna start scratching the surface of this. Yeah, and so it's like once you that initial mountain to climb is so difficult, mm-hmm. but then once you get to that point, it's just like cruising. You're just cruising. No, yeah, it really is because. You got all these small YouTubers who are starting out. They're struggling, just trying to get views. And then you get one big YouTuber who endorses them or, or co- like mm-hmm. collaborates with them once, and then they're just right, yeah, right at the top, skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. And, just, and then then they're making thousands, millions, whatever. I don't yeah. even know what a YouTube paycheck even pays. <laughs> it's uh, a, all it I just depends, know, all I know is that you can just get a lot if you're getting a lot of views. Mm-hmm. So yeah. The the YouTube thing is fun, and I grew up watching gamers on YouTube, oh, yeah. like Let's Plays, yep. like you know the classics, PewDiePie, oh, yeah. Jacksepticeye, yep. you know the whole the whole shebang. You watch Captain Sparkles. Captain Sparkles, Captain Sparkles, yeah. A lot. Oh yeah, Captain Mark, Sparkles. Markiplier. Markiplier, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a big. Uh, I watched Shroud a little bit when I was mm-hmm. in my PUBG phase, and then it was just it was just cool to see, but now like they're all adults, and it's this weird change yeah, environment like, where it's like. Maybe you should be doing something else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've only been doing this. So like, this is for what like you know how to do all your life. So this mm-hmm. is what you're doing. Well, and it's cool to see them like adapt and change what they're doing, mm-hmm. and they're like, you know, I don't really want to game anymore, guys. So I'm just gonna talk to fans now. Yeah, and that's all. Well, I, do. I mean, that's one thing too. It's cause because you're going through YouTube, and it's not like a. I mean, I guess some of these people do get contracts for mm-hmm. some things, but you can't like retire. Or like yeah. you can't like it's not like retiring from a job and where you still get like payment the benefits in and, and the benefits yeah, yeah you know you just flat out basically just quit mm-hmm. and you don't get any other benefits so I guess I that that's probably why the reason that they're doing it for so long mm-hmm. but, yeah and it'd be it'd be funny like going from YouTube and then now you work as like a manager of like a TJ Maxx or something. <laughs> <laughs> you just get a normal job. Yeah. You just see Markiplier <laughs> making your sandwich at Subway. That'd be like, crazy. <laughs> it's just like, you walk, you whoa. Walking out of Walmart, Jack the guy goes, have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, uh, would you like a paper or plastic bag? <laughs> this is paper like, or whoa. plastic shirt. Yeah, it's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that would I be. just watch your YouTube video? Yeah, that would be nuts, dude. Yeah. yeah. And that's That'd why, be crazy. Well, that's what I was saying. If you if you can somehow convert doing gaming stuff into something that's like 
really TV. So then you can stop gaming and now you can just cast games. Yeah. Or now you can stop gaming now you can like ma- be a manager for another mm, or YouTuber a coach or, so, or a coach or something. Well, like you know I said, I mean? it's just be, not big enough yet. Or, well, I haven't said it can be just like sports. You know. Yeah. You have these older football players who come on and they're sportscasters. You know, coaches now too. Mm-hmm. Even you know trainers. Whatever. Yeah. Like you can have all of these older players and stuff like that come on and just coach. Because a lot of that game knowledge is the same for most games. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, you need to work on this skill. You need to work on your positioning, stuff like that. Or they can just come in with their old game knowledge and cast a new game. Like, yeah, I you know I'd position myself over here because, you know, this is a choke point of a site. It's yada, yada, yada. But, like, it can live on just like normal sports. And it it will constantly be evolving and changing. Because mm, new games are coming out. Yeah, new games are coming all out. All the time. Like, new it, developers. Yeah, a- Apex comes out and it's like, this is the next big game. Yeah. Overwatch, like, and that died. You know, it, it just, it has things. Did Overwatch you know, die really, though? Well, we're hoping a little <laughs> bit, I guess. But <laughs> it was definitely, at the beginning, it was humongous. It was massive. And then, and then they had like all those like weird scandal things. And then I think people oh, stopped yeah. playing. Oh, and bit. the loot boxes. Yeah, the and loot the boxes loot boxes yeah. got them. <laughs> yeah. I got them. Yeah. And then Overwatch 2 came out. Which yeah. is just the same game as the first it's one. The same then. game, but it's just, hey, we added a couple characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, barely. Yeah. yeah. So. It, it was <sighs> an interesting choice to no. make Overwatch 2 the way that they did. And they're basically doing the same thing with CS 2. But well, CS came out like a hundred years ago. I guess. Yeah. So like it needs. It's a, an old game. It, it needs an update. It really needed an update. It looks beautiful. I was, honest, I I don't know if you've seen any gameplay. I need it. to because the first one looks so unplayable that like I don't know how it was as big as it was. Like I can't even tell if my gun is shooting or if like, like I'm hitting somebody or like. Dude, oh, <laughs> the amount of times that I thought I should be hitting someone and my bullets <laughs> are going seven feet. To the right or over their head. <laughs> oh. It's just, it's an un, it was close to an unplayable game. Yeah. Reminded me of like Team Fortress 2. Oh, I like love it, Team yeah. Fortress 2 though. <laughs> it's I like, loved it. Oh, yeah, it has, it has value in the same way that like playing Roblox has value. You know what I mean? I but guess. it's just like, it's, a, it's an awesome game, mm-hmm. but it just, it desperately needs to be modernized oh, and, and modernized like updated more playable. Yeah. <laughs> like, like at least update the graphics or just something. something, man. Because update the engine. I, like, like I can barely see what's going on right yeah. now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, CS CS two looks pretty good, and I think that'll revive CSGO. Uh, yeah, I live for maybe I don't know a couple a couple of months, months. maybe yeah. <laughs> or like that. maybe uh, maybe a year. <laughs> well, Optimistically, we'll say CSGO a year. is a huge streaming or yeah. Twitch streaming thing too, which. Is interesting, and I think that has a lot to do with like the in-game market and like the purchasing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the um, skins, yeah, skins is a big deal. You could sell a skin for like a hundred dollars, can't you? Oh, more than that, yeah. <laughs> you sell for like thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah, which is and like the stickers. I don't know if you know about these, but there are stickers that'll drop at like pro league events or these capsules, and then like then those capsules are like a dollar or whatever. But you can unpack stickers. It's a dollars. You can just make it's, money. It's a little sticker. It's like NFTs, but just for CSGO only. <laughs> That's so insane. And it's just, it's like this little thing that goes on your gun. And it's like a thousand, two thousand dollars. And people are actually buying these. That's insane. I'm just like, you know, I can make a money. I can make a living just by playing CS. I was going to say. Yeah. Getting these cases, getting these and unboxing, you know, skins. Just I'm gonna be a CSGO it's salesman. It's just gambling. It's just gambling. Yeah. It's, it's, just gambling. It it's electronic gambling. Yeah. It's CS gambling, yeah. man. That's, That's what the go stands for. It's all it is. Gambling. <laughs> CS gambling, man. It's yeah. just a slot machine. Man. That's all it is. Yeah. I have a buddy who plays CS all the time, and he's like, he's pretty good at it. I'm pretty sure he got close to like, I think the top ranks global elite or something like that. Um, he got pretty close to it, but he has a lot of skins. He's put. I don't even want to know how much money into those <laughs> cases. Um, but, like, you know, he could probably make all that money back. I'll if say he, he could sold sell all his of, account. If he and just like, sold all of his skins. Yeah. yeah. $5,000 or something disgusting. It's yeah. Just, yeah. St- stupid. And, like, the knives on there. You can have knives that'll sell for, like, three grand. Uh, that's, dude, that's so insane. That's so insane. 
Um, we're approaching the end of our uh, scheduled time in the <sighs> podcast room, but gotcha. this was awesome, Ben. Yeah, I'm so great. glad you reached out, yeah. man. Oh, of course. Um, any last plugging you want to do for like your tournaments, this club, you know, any last plug in, I'd encourage you to do oh, it now. Oh, yeah. Um, so for the tournament next weekend, uh, we'll be streaming, uh, let me get the dates. Yeah, the times. It. Saturday and Sunday. I know Sunday we're going to be doing it in the afternoon, and Saturday's going to be, I want to say, in the evening. Let's see. Oh, why, why did I have it here? I swear I had it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, here we go. Um, Saturday is going to be 1230 to 4. Um, and then Sunday is going to be 1 to 5. Okay. Um, CST. So tune in. I see you gaming and esports on Twitch. We'll be streaming that. You'll see me, Sam. Well, hopefully see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Me, Sam. <laughs> Here at um, least. Alex. Maybe we can get some other people on there to help cast. Mm -hmm. um, I think Sam's trying to get the camera in the esports room. Um, but yeah, do that. Then other than that. About it. That's all. That's well, the only plugs I got. Yeah, same. It was <laughs> awesome having you on. Thank ben. you. Thanks for having me <laughs> yeah. on. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. All right. Mm -hmm.